Okay, <clears throat> we've got a little bit of a problem here. Um, the condition of this particular computer has gotten worse, and now its camera is not working. The video side of the camera is working, but not the camera itself. So we're going to have to have that looked into. You're my backup. I'm doing this with an old dinosaur that's on its last legs, and your new one that... Yeah. This is the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. This is where I read books and talk about books. There's no special effects. There's no theme music. I, um, if, if the audio goes bad on this, please blame Hewlett Packard and Best Buy. They both tell me there's nothing wrong with my computer. However, like I just said, the camera is not working. And on top of all that, the audio goes, and the audio has been going since day one. So a restore is not going to work because the camera had audio problems on day one. And no, I couldn't return it because when I had downloaded Microsoft Word, it downloaded all my personal information. So there was no way in hell. And I know people who can take a blank, 100% blank, item and restore it so there was no way in hell i was going to trust a factory restore no way in hell so anyways please check out my star trek next generation recaps on friday with all the verbal garbleness my if thens on fridays also with all the verbal garbage uh, you know, garbledness, and my flashback Mondays where I talk about my favorite magazine, Romantic Times Book Review. Please check all this out. We started in 2007. We're working our way through 2016. We are currently in 2011. Um, so, and also please check out my daily book reviews. And we are doing, uh, we have just about finished Patterson's Alex Cross series and J.R. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhood series. And we are now working on C.S. Harris' St. Seer series. This is book seven in the series. And this lady, Gabriel Tennyson, was murdered by a lake. And, a, and she had two nephews with her. What happened? She was found murdered. What happened to the boys? The boys are missing. They're little boys. They're both under 10. Um, what did she see? What did she know? Why did somebody want her killed? Was there something going on? Did she have knowledge of something? Did she see something she wasn't supposed to see? Did she find out something she wasn't supposed to find out? Um... And we do discover that it has a lot to do with King Arthur. Um, here we go. And don't forget, there'll be lots of spoils. I won't tell you who done it, but I will tell you everything else. Um, are you familiar with the discovery of the bodies of King Arthur and Guinevere in Glastony Abbey in night 1191? Not really. Chad nodded as if to say he expected this ignorance. According to the medieval chronicle Gerald of Wales, King Henry II learned the local location of King Arthur's resting place from a mysterious Welsh bard. The king was old and frail at the time, but before his death, he relayed the bard's information to the monks of Glastony Abbey. Following the king's instructions, the monks dug down between two ancient pyramids in their churchyard. Sixteen feet below the surface, they came upon a split, hollowed log out containing the bodies of a man and a woman. Above the coffins lay a stone slab, attached to the bottom of which was an iron cross. The cross bore the Latin inscription, Here lies buried the renowned King Arthur with Guinevere, his second wife, in Isle of Avalon. Convenient, Sebastian said. Almost as if those who buried him looked into the future a few hundred years and knew that some day those monks would be digging up good King Arthur. So they made certain to include in their engraving all the information anyone might need to make the identification complete. 
Just so. Needless to say, the monks collected the newly discovered bones and reburied them first in the Abbey's Lady Chapel, then beneath the high altar in the marble coffin provided by King Edward in 1278, along with the cross. It was attached to the top of the sepulchre, but when the abbey was destroyed in the suppression of the monasteries under Henry VIII, the bones of King Arthur and his queen disappeared. For a time, the cross was reportedly kept in the parish church of St. John the Baptist, but it too eventually disappeared, probably during the time of Cromwell. And precisely, does this have anything to do with Miss Tennyson? Now, what this whole time I'm reading this book, I'm thinking of Tennyson the poet, and that's supposed to be part of it. Um, I need. It. Um, as you know, I've been occupied in cataloging the library and collection of the late Richard Guff. Amongst his possessions, I discovered an ancient leaden cross inscribed with the words, um, H I C L, no, I A C E T S E. P U L T U S I N C L I T U S R E X A R T U R I U S in I N S U L A A V A L O N I A Nothing about Guinevere, he says. Just so. Reports on the exact transcription have always varied slightly. How large a course are we talking about here? Approximately one foot in length. Where the devil did it come from? That I do not know. As far as I've been able to ascertain, the cross came into God's possession, interesting enough, along with a box of ancient bones in the last days of his life, when he was unfortunately too ill to give them the attention they deserve. However, Goth apparently believed the cross to be that which the monks discovered in the 12th century. And Goth believed the bones were those of Arthur and Guinevere. You can't be serious. I am only reporting on the conclusions reached by Goth himself. There is no more respect, respected name among antiquians. I take it Miss Tennyson did not agree with Goth's conclusion. She did not. Last Friday, she drove out to Goth Hall to view... The cross and bones. The bones are understandably of great antiquity, but she instantly dismissed the cross as a modern forgery. And apparently, if you've continued, uh, CS continued this little um, uh, play along with the author of uh, historical memories, that she also decided that uh, Gabriella was going to be the lady in the lake, too. And during an argument, um, and I, I couldn't find the page again, and I, I thought I wrote it down, but I guess I wrote it down incorrectly. Um, she throws the, the sword into the lake. So that's another um, thing that C.S. Harris takes advantage of. And so we have to wonder um what what's going on with why did Gabrielle have to be killed? What did she know? Was she killed because of the author legend? Could she prove did she have proof? Why didn't they just steal the proof instead of killing her? What happened to the boys? And um what other secrets? Why is it that in every book Hendon, Jarvis's father, and uh Excuse me. Hendon Sebastian's father and Jarvis Hero's father are keeping things from them. And why Hero is also keeping things from Sebastian, too. Sometimes she sides with her father. Or her father goes, well, you can tell him a little bit, but don't tell him the whole thing. C.S. is famous for giving us little snippets of information, but not the whole story. You go talk to character A, and he tells you little, and then B tells you a little more, and then C tells you something else, and then when he gets to C, he goes, oh, no, I need to go back and talk to A again. 
So, and then A gives a little bit more information. And then he does the roundabout again. And then he comes back to A again and gets a little bit more information. And we also have uh, some poems I thought I would include. Oh, this is driving me crazy. Um, so then we have this poem that floats through the book in keeping with Tennyson's and the poet's. Bid me to weep, and I will weep, while I have eyes to see, and having none, yet I will keep a heart to weep for thee. Bid me despair, and I will despair, upon that cypress tree. O oh, bid me die, and I will dare, earn death to die for thee. Thou art my life, my love, my heart, the very eyes of me. At last command of every part to live and die for thee. So. A Tennyson's poem, The Lady of Shalot, S-H-A-L-O-T. And I hope the audio is still with me. Um, we also talked about the Lady of the Lake, known as Vivian or Nimue, a mystical fig figure from the Arthurian legend. She is often portrayed as a benevolent sorceress who lives in a castle beneath a lake surrounded by the island of Avalon. The Lady of the Lake is famous for giving Arthur the magical sword of Excalibur and fostering Lancelot and imprisoning Merlin. So, what happens? Who murdered Gabrielle? A couple of other people get murdered too. What secrets? What secrets are hero? Keeping from Sebastian. What secrets is Sebastian keeping from Hero? And we meet another potential relative of Sebastian's in this book. Um, a, a sibling. Another sibling. And Sebastian is still looking for his mother and he has yet to find her. And those who know where she is are not telling him where she is. And what does Amanda know? His sister, what does Cat know? What does Hero know? Why is everybody keeping secrets? And who gets the dog? These are the pondering questions besides who married, uh, who killed Gabriella. What secrets did she know? Everybody's got secrets in this book. What's up with that? You'll have to read the book to check it out. Have a good one. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for me, please. Thank you.